Assalamualaikum and greetings everyone. Hi, hello. So how are you guys doing today? Well, I hope everyone is doing well, especially when we are in the middle of a pandemic right now. Okay, anyways, my name is Norris Diana and I am going to explain to you guys about the eight categories of English inflections in morphology. But first things first, what is inflection in English language? Well, Inflections or inflectional morphemes in English are suffixes that are added into words like nouns, verbs and adjectives to mark a certain grammatical function. However, they do not change the basic meaning of the word or the grammatical category of the word. For example, they do not change a noun to a verb or a verb to an adjective, for example. They only add specifications to ensure that the word is in the appropriate form and make the sentence grammatically correct. Therefore, can the words under inflection morphology be found in separate entries in dictionaries? No, they cannot. Why, you may ask? Because again, inflections only modify a word so that it fits a grammatical context. They do not form a whole new word. Okay, you are going to understand better later when I elaborate this. Now, if you see in the textbooks, you will find that English is it's not a very inflectional language, unlike other languages like Arabic, Spanish, etc. Why? That is because in English, we only have eight inflectional affixes. So what are the eight inflections? First of all, don't get confused by my diagram right here. I just want to show you guys that they are classified under three main word or grammatical categories, which are noun, verb and adjective and under each grammatical category only comes the inflections so i am going to elaborate more on this according to the grammatical categories so it would be easier for you guys to understand now it may look a lot at first but don't worry because as we go along and as you see all the examples that i'm going to show you you're going to see that we are very very much familiar with all eight of these english inflections because we use them in our daily life especially as an english major student now let's get right into it okay now under noun the first one there are two categories of inflections and they are plural and possessive inflections for plural marks as multiple or more than one by adding the suffix s behind a noun for example here the word cats for cats okay i'm sure we we all know how it works like burger and burgers boy boys girl girls okay and next possessive inflection marks ownership with the apostrophe s for example olivia's garden is full of roses john's bedroom emily's book okay you just have to remember that under noun we only have two suffixes which are the suffix s and suffix apostrophe s all right okay moving on for adjectives we have two categories here they are comparative and superlative comparative inflection a uh, marks as comparison and they are usually accompanied by the word then for example here bobby runs faster than ethan while superlative inflections refer to the suffix est for example here bobby is the fastest runner of all time okay are we good so far great now we are going to move to the last word category which are which is the verb okay we have four categories under verbs the first one is the third person singular present which adds the suffix s after a verb in a sentence to mark the singular third person in a present tense okay for example she always wonders about the future she always thinks about life okay next is progressive which uses the suffix ing to mark an ongoing or continuous action for example here he is currently reading a great book he is eating in the kitchen right now thirdly is the past tense ed which is to mark a, a past action or an action in the past for example here i cooked din dinner at yesterday sorry i baked a cake last night all right and lastly would be the past participle ed to mark a past participle for example taylor has always wanted a puppy okay that 
That would be the end of my presentation today. I hope you guys have learned something from me. So should you have any questions, please feel free to ask me later. So thank you for listening. Bye.